Five months ago, I had 740 subscribers. Today, I have 50,000. So thank you. I thought it'd be fun to share everything that I did to get here, so what worked and what didn't work, and then talk a little bit about where I'm going next. So I started YouTube when I was 14. I posted a video once a week for about six months, but then I gave up because it was super embarrassing. Then I tried again when I was 19, but I gave up because I didn't have time and it was also embarrassing. After that, I tried when I was 22, this time a little bit more yoga focused, but I could never bring myself to press publish because you guessed it, it was too embarrassing. And finally, at the age of 26, I decided to revive my YouTube channel with 360 subscribers and give it one last go. This time around, it was prompted by my dad having a major heart attack and me being laid off from my job. Some might call it a quarter life crisis and some might call it, no, yeah, actually that's probably it. It's just a quarter life crisis. <laughs> I don't know how to make it natural. How do I start? No idea. We're just gonna go for it. What am I doing? Dear God, okay. That was 10 months ago, and the last five months have gone much better than the first five months. So maybe let's start with talking about that. The first five months. The excitement of starting a YouTube channel lasted for maybe two weeks. <laughs> like I'd made a video, published the video. Three out of four women stopped playing sports after high school and I'm one of them. Thought it would do decently well and then it didn't. It got maybe like 200 views and I was instantly let down and sad about it and questioning all of my decisions. So yeah, I'd say First two weeks, super exciting, very jazzed on this new endeavor. But everything after that was an uphill climb, <laughs> let's just say. <laughs> to be specific, three things come to mind. The first one is that I never wanted to go out and film. I get really uncomfortable filming in public and even filming by myself. Uh, I'm, it, it just takes a lot of energy out of me sometimes. If you want to send out, if you want my questions, if you want, if you want to, if you want to use my, if you want, if you want to use my questions, you can find them in the description below. Took me forever to say that, but we got there. <sighs> uh, the second thing is I never liked any of my projects in the beginning. I thought all of my video ideas were bad, but then the third thing is the filming became worth it. And I thought all of my projects were great. Once I started editing, I've seen memes about it where it's like the creative process is you have a great idea and you get so excited and then you try to execute it and it's nowhere near where you thought it'd be and you think you're an idiot. And then all of a sudden you kind of find the diamond in the rough and you think it's great again and then you release it to the world and nobody likes it. And then you go back to thinking you're an idiot and then it's a cycle because you get another great idea and it starts all over again. So yeah, that was the first five months. It was very, what am I doing with my life? Yeah, that's it. What am I doing with my life? <laughs> After five months, I got 740 subscribers and I thought that was pretty good, but I figured the algorithm hated me. Classic beginner YouTuber problem. I know the algorithm hated me. I wasn't the problem. YouTube was the problem. <laughs> it's like when things go well, you attribute it to yourself and your own efforts, but when things go poorly, it's somebody else's problem. Yeah, I was doing that. So five month mark, I decided to start a new channel because I thought the 360 subscribers that I used to have weren't watching my videos because obviously they'd moved on. So maybe that was telling the algorithm that my subscribers didn't like me and that's why it wasn't getting my, I wasn't getting my videos pushed out to anybody. So I did that. I started a new channel. I remade the intro to my cardio video to be more focused around others and less focused around myself. I'm doing cardio every day for 30 days because four months ago, my very healthy dad survived a major heart attack. And I'm going to find ways for you and me to enjoy cardio because it is so, so important when it comes to preventing and recovering from heart disease. 
We're doing the stairs. The minimum recommended amount of cardio is 2.5 hours per week. Do you meet that minimum requirement? Because I don't. And that's because all of my days are spent at a desk or on a couch. And then I made my I Queer Eyed Myself video. And then I published those on my new channel within two days of each other. And I was so excited. I thought, you know, this is my time. The algorithm will pick it up. And each video got about 10 views in three days. Then I had an emotional breakdown. Um, I remember being in my room and crying and hugging my boyfriend and saying, this is when I give up. This is... This is it. I'm, I, I'm done with the roller coaster of emotions of putting all of my efforts into a video only for it to go nowhere and have to do it all over again. I'm done. And then Preston goes, replied to a comment that I left on one of his videos. And he just said something nice. I don't even remember what it was, but it was along the lines of like, thank you for taking the time to say something nice. I hope you have a great day. It was just a, a nice comment. And then he commented on one of my videos and he said, ha 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 ha, something, something, something. This made me laugh, this was great. And I kept crying, but this time it was tears of joy. And I remember calling my parents and saying, this guy thinks that I'm funny, or at least he thinks my video was funny. And it gave me the encouragement to not give up <laughs> that day. I don't know if I would have come out of that funk, but I was so low and that was awesome. The piece of advice that was most helpful for me in my endeavors and is still helpful for me right now is have the mindset that I don't get to follow my dreams for five months because there are gonna be up and downs. It's, I have to do this for five months and then I can reassess and pick a different path. I have to overcome all of the problems and I have to keep pushing even though it sucks. It, you know what, just in summation, nothing worth doing is ever easy. The quote, the easy quote, everybody knows the quote. It's true. Following your dreams is all fun in theory, but it honestly is super crappy sometimes. So yeah, you have to do it. That's the advice. I scrapped that second channel idea and I brought the new cardio video and my Queer Eye video over to my existing channel or the one that you're watching this video on right now. I published them and then I left it and started working on my 30,000 steps a day video which also happened to be a fundraiser for the Heart and Stroke Foundation. And I remember filming a walking scene with my dad and I got 10 subscribers in an hour. Just found out I have 900 subscribers. Wow. <laughs> that felt really cheesy and bad, but it's a genuine moment of happiness. <laughs> and I was like, okay, something weird is happening. And I remember checking my phone and the cardio video that if I hadn't made this clear, I posted that cardio video like three months into making YouTube and it got 2000 views. This new cardio video was the same thing, just with a different intro. So 20 minute video, only one minute of the video was different. But that one minute made a huge difference because that cardio video took off. In one week, it had 13,000 views. And then in two weeks, it had 140,000 views. And in three weeks, it had 232,000 views. Up until that point, my best video had 2,000 views. I'm so happy that I was with my parents for this channel growth moment and that I was filming this walking video so that I had to get outside and not be glued to my computer. But even still, my camera roll looked like this because I was constantly checking YouTube analytics to see I hitting 1,000 subscribers and eventually hitting 2,000 subscribers. In a month, I went from 740 subscribers to 15,000, 15,418. And since then, it's just been climbing. And obviously, you know that because you're watching this video and you can see by my number down there that I've 
I'm at 50,000 subscribers or more. Who knows? I'm uh, crazy. So in that one month time period of rapid growth, I noticed a couple things and I wanted to share them with you. The first thing is I finally started telling people confidently that I was making YouTube videos. Up until then, when people asked me what I was doing for a living or doing with my life, I would blabber on about, you know, my dad had a heart attack and I was laid off and life's so short, so I'm gonna do this YouTube thing and it's just for fun and blah, blah, blah. Even though I knew in my mind that from day one, I wanted to make YouTube a career, but I never said that out loud, obviously, because that would be embarrassing. Uh, when it ultimately failed. And the scarier part to all of the growth was I was, my videos were going out to more people, which meant that I was exposing myself to more people that don't like me. And, you know, I obviously get some mean comments. I would say that I'm one of the really lucky people on YouTube that gets 99.9% .9 positive comments, but that 0.1%, I do see them. And I can tell you, I've lost days of work to overthinking those comments and feeling sorry for myself. Um, it takes the fun out of experimenting and wanting to try new videos because there's that small part of me that's like, oh, well, you know, the audience liked these first four videos, but they're gonna hate this fifth one or whatever. Um, and then someone commented on one of my challenge videos saying, and yet, at the end of the challenge, your forehead is still as big as it was at the beginning. <laughs> I didn't even think I had a big forehead. Okay, so now we're here. I have 50,000 subscribers and a bunch of videos that I'm pretty proud of. Some are better than others. And now I'm going to reflect on the whole 10 months and talk about the best parts and the worst parts. I wrote them down. Number one, the people. And I know that that's a very hokey answer that people say in interviews about why they like their company, but it's true. The best part about doing YouTube is the people that I get to interact with, whether it's you, the audience, or other YouTubers. I see the comments, I see the private messages, and I do my best to respond to all of them. The second best thing is like I mentioned before, my dad had a major heart attack a year ago and it's been so great to spend so much time with him and make videos together and to see how excited he is about the YouTube thing. Did it? That's a lot of okay. team. <laughs> we even have a podcast together called Live Laugh Larry. You should totally check it out. But it's just, I'm so grateful that I didn't lose him and this feels like really special time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the third best thing is companies reaching out to me. When I got laid off, I was applying to hundreds of jobs and if you've ever done it before, you know that it's horrible, especially in this economy and if you're going through it right now, you got this, I believe in you. But I was applying to all these big companies and getting denial letters like you wouldn't believe. And what's so cool is through YouTube, I now have big companies reaching out to me to pay me money to promote them. That's awesome. That's kind of how YouTube channels can stay afloat is through sponsorships. So hoping everybody's okay with an ad read every once in a while. And the last best thing has been the friend support that I've had. Like Steph for being in my videos and putting up with me and Sarah and my partner Jackson and Aiden and everyone who sent in questions for the Live Laugh Larry podcast when I needed some last minute. Oh, and mom and dad, obviously. Dad's the one who I put on camera all the time, but my mom is just as supportive, if not more, and then for the worst parts, I already kind of talked about them before, but I have three that kind of stand out throughout the whole 10 months. And the first one is tying my self-worth to views. I haven't figured that one out yet. I still get a little down on myself when a video doesn't get as many views as I would have liked it to. 
Um, so that's something that I have to work on. The second is thumbnails, i.e. the bane of my existence. <laughs> you know, when you see people and they're like smiling for a picture and the second the picture is taken, they're like back to being miserable. That's what thumbnails are. <laughs> and lastly, the worst or hardest part has been that there's no path. I have no idea what my life is gonna look like. And that's terrifying. I don't like it. I like to be in the know. Um, but in a funny way, it's also one of the best parts because I have no idea what my life is gonna look like. But I'm having fun, so that has to count for something. I have full intention of keeping this YouTube channel going as well as my Patreon and the Live Laugh Larry podcast. If there's a lot of time between videos, it's not because I'm giving up or being lazy. It's likely because I'm working on another video or I'm sick because I have the immune system of a five-year-old. If this type of video is something that you enjoy from me, please let me know in the comments and I can keep making them maybe even more often. Um, but yeah, we're halfway to 100,000. That's crazy. I can't believe we did it. So thank you so, so much from the bottom of my heart and I'll see you in the next video.